The Grumman F-7F Tiger Cat, an impressive heavy fighter, had a fascinating history linked to the renowned Grumman Cats. It marked a significant milestone as the U.S. Navy's inaugural twin-engine fighter, introducing groundbreaking design tailored for Midway-class aircraft carriers. While World War II didn't showcase its capabilities, the Tiger Cat left an enduring legacy during the Korean War. Its debut in various roles solidified the Cat's reputation. With remarkable design features, it stood as an aviation marvel, deviating from its original carrier-based plan due to its overwhelming power. Honored Inception Grumman's expertise in carrier-based fighters began in the 1930s with the F-4F Wildcat, crucial in the Pacific War. The F-6F Hellcat, powered by the Pratt and Whitney Double Wasp, further strengthened the Allies. Setting high standards, the Tiger Cat's lineage aimed to outperform its remarkable predecessors. The XF-7F1 prototype contract, inked in June 1941, aimed to create a fighter excelling in ground attack while surpassing existing aircraft in performance and firepower. Multiplicity Memoirs The Tiger Cat's second attempt at a twin-engine fighter surpassed the first, offering flexibility in armament with a substantial airframe. Departing from conventional wisdom, it featured both machine guns and cannons for superior firepower. The Tiger Cat achieved the best of both worlds, functioning as a heavily armed single-seat aircraft for ground support, photo reconnaissance, and night fighting. Armed with four 20mm cannons and 4.50 caliber machine guns, it demonstrated unparalleled adaptability. Top-tier Gladiator The Tiger Cat's sleek design enhanced its speed, featuring a small cross-section fuselage, a pointed nose, and a conventional empennage. Despite obstructed side and rear visibility due to radial engine nasals, the pilot enjoyed a decent forward and upward view. Notably, the unique tricycle landing gear distinguished it from traditional carrier aircraft. Diverging from the traditional tail dragger style prevalent in that era, the Tiger Cat featured a unique arrangement with two main landing gear systems retracting into the underside of each engine nacelle. The nose-mounted landing gear followed a similar retraction and all landing struts were equipped with a single wheel. After its maiden flight in December 1943, the Tiger Cat showcased exceptional capabilities, meeting all expectations. The XF-7F1 swiftly entered production to fulfill the Marine Corps' urgent request for 500 aircraft in the Pacific Theater, with the order placed even before the prototype's inaugural flight. Captain Fred Trapnell, a highly regarded USN test pilot of that era, enthusiastically declared, it's the best damn fighter I've ever flown. The Last Chance The F-7F encountered a significant challenge from the start. It exceeded the size limits of the Midway-class carriers. While possessing impressive speed and firepower, its weight and high landing speed posed challenges. Moreover, the twin double wasp engines contributed excess power, making it too fast for routine carrier operations. Unfortunately, the fighter's poor stability with one running engine led to its failure in carrier suitability trials. Critical issues were only resolved with the second production version, the F-7F3. Similar to the F-7F1 in appearance, it featured upgraded Pratt and Whitney R2834W engines. Despite another attempt at carrier qualifications on the USS Shangri-La, it faced challenges with wing failure on heavy landings. However, the F-7F3 still served effectively as both a day and night fighter, along with its role as a photo reconnaissance aircraft. Crooked Contest Unfavorably, as World War II approached its conclusion, the initial production contract was cancelled. Despite this, Tiger Cat production continued until late 1946, marking it as the first twin-engine fighter ordered in significant quantities. Surpassed by faster and more powerful aircraft, the Tiger Cat became obsolete within a few years and was retired from Marine service. Despite this, the aircraft experienced a revival over the following two decades, particularly in fighting forest fires in the western U.S. Some examples are still airworthy, while others are displayed in various locations. 
Thank you for watching our video. We trust you found it enjoyable. And if you did, consider subscribing to our channel. Stay updated by turning on the notification bell. There's more intriguing content on the way.